Good morning, Rams, and welcome back to another remote edition of the Ram Report Morning Show. I'm your host, Brendan Sagbo, and as always, we continue to bring you the best news that Heistown has to offer. Now, before we jump right into our first story, Mr. S wants to remind you that you can still order a yearbook online. Just go to the HHS homepage and find the yearbook link. Now for our first story. Zoom and Google Meets has become very important to us recently. So today, Spencer Cohen is going to give us tips and tricks to take full advantage of them. Spencer? Thanks, Brandon. Zoom and Google Meet have been an important part of communication for schools, friends, and family during this quarantine. That being said, you should know what to do to make your virtual meeting a success. Do enter the class call like our friend Justin, with a big smile on your face. Good morning, Mr. Coons. Good morning, class. I'm so happy to see all of you. Justin always greets his teacher and expresses how happy he is to see everyone on the call. You doing good? Glad. He makes sure he is engaged in the conversation by adding constructive input. That's a great point. Good job. He always remembers to be supportive of his classmates. Oh, no, you take it. No, that's, you, you got it. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Justin isn't a ball hog on the call. He places himself on mute to give others a chance to speak, but most importantly, to prevent any unnecessary audio feedback. You see, being a constructive participant in a lively virtual meeting is simple. However, there are some things that you should avoid. Tyler, welcome to the meeting. Don't be the sleepy head like Tyler, the guy who always shows up to class fresh out of bed. Ugh. Hey, could you like sit down or something? Do not be Mr. On the Move, who is constantly walking and moving. Yes, they delivered your Hey, pets. hey, 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 I'm on a Zoom call right now. Can you guys... Don't be the guy who forgets to mute his mic. Then, there's those mysterious people on the call who never participate and never turn their camera on. To discuss this phenomenon, we have Tyler Astucci. Tyler? Hello, Tyler, are you there? In all... We have to do our part to enhance our Zoom call experience. I'm Spencer Cohen for the Ram Report. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, Spencer. And I'll be sure to use those tips in my next video chat. Now, do you like reading books? Well, too bad, because Dylan Pud Leslie is here to bring you the Ram Report book review. Take it away, Dylan. We've watched all the movies, all the TV shows, all the memes, and played all the video games. Now, we have come to the last resort by reading books. My name is Dylan Podlesny with the Ram Report, and today, we're bringing you the Ram Report book review. J.R.R. Tolkien's fantasy epic Lord of the Rings has been put together in this one book, and it is massive. We follow the story of that of Frodo Baggins, who is assigned to destroy the One Ring to rule them all. Meanwhile, we are following the story of Aragorn, who is, ta- who is also on his own personal mission to restore his claim to the Gondorian throne and help Frodo by, destroying- by defeating Sauron's armies across Middle-earth. Reading this book is no easy feat. It is massive. However, if you get through it all, you rather wish you'd watch the movies instead. No doubt, reading the books individually is a lot better than this. But that doesn't change the fact that this is a good book. The only downside is it's big. I give this book 4 Rams out of 5. Harry Potter and the Curse of Child is actually a play. It was published in script format before its Broadway debut. This may seem like a good read for Harry Potter fans, but... J.K. Rowling seems to have forgotten the plot of her own novels. There are major discrepancies between this book and the original series. And that's why the Ram Report must give it the lowest ranking possible. One Ram. It is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a wife. 
And that, my friends, is the famous first line of my favorite book, Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice. First published back in 1813, it's a story that never gets old to me, of Elizabeth Bennet and her growing relationship with the dark and mysterious Mr. Darcy. A lot of critics have faulted Jane Austen in that the real world just doesn't appear in any of her books. After all, in 1812 and 1813, typhus broke out in Europe and even plague in Malta. Great Britain, where this story supposedly takes place, was at war with the United States at the time. But none of those world events trouble the folks of Jane Austen's world in Pride and Prejudice with their concerns about love and life. What is real about Jane Austen's writing is the characters. The characters come through as vividly off the page as folks that you meet today and all of their human failings and all of their foolishness, proving that 200 years later, we've gotten no wiser as a human race than we were back then. And for that, I give this book five rams. This concludes the Ram Report book review. I hope you check out some of these books, and remember to please stay safe and check your emails for announcements from your teachers. I've been Dylan with my lesson from the Ram Report. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Dylan. And now for our next story. Tyler Shamper is going to take us through the Ram Report's first ever quarantine Olympics. Who's going to win gold? Well, let's find out. As we all know, the 2020 Olympics have been postponed to next summer because of the coronavirus pandemic. We know everyone loves to watch the competitive games, so the Ram Report has a solution. The 2020 Family Quarantine Olympics. A few of our Ram Report families will go head to head to see who has what it takes to bring home the gold. Even if our traditional sports still aren't happening, we can still enjoy competition from our homes. First up, with the social distance challenge, we have the Tabor family. They're going to compete to see how far six feet apart really is. Hello everyone and welcome to our Tabor family Olympic competition challenge. For our game, we will be playing the social distance challenge, where we will each take a tape measure, hold it upside down so we can't see the distance, and see how close to six feet we can actually get. And first off, to start this competition, we have Noah Tabor. Noah here, looking very confident as he pulls back that tape measure. Time to see the results. Seven feet and 11 inches. Oh my, Noah, you know we're aiming for six feet here. Anyways, next up we have the Cecilia Tabor. Cecilia, taking her time here, making sure to be very careful. Time to flip it over. Six feet, six inches, the closest one yet. Let's see if Mr. Tabor can pull off the win here. He needs to make it within six inches of the six foot distance in order to beat Cecilia. Ah, so close, six feet and 11 inches. And by chance, I won this competition and no, I did not rig it. I got six feet and six inches and I was the closest to six feet in this challenge. Great job. You really showed us how social distancing is done. Next up, we have the Shell family doing the toilet paper shot put event. Hey guys, we're the Shell family, and today we are going to do the toilet paper roll challenge. Basically, each person will throw their roll of toilet paper, and we will see who is the furthest, and they will win the competition. So, we all have our rolls. You guys ready? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Let's do it. Let's do this. First up, we have Mom, who is known for her arm, and let's see what she can do. Oh, she had that good flick in the wrist. Not terribly far, but she got it midway through the field. All right, nice job. Next up, we got Dad, who claims that he's going to win it all. Well, let's see if that holds any truth. Let's go. And that was a lie, as he got it somewhat up the field, but um, not enough to beat Mom. Well, still did good. Nice job. And so here you are with our third contestant. Uh, John, known for his uh, throwing ability. Uh, however, the wind's picked up here, so let's see what he could do now. Um, all right, take it away, John. Uh, 
And that's our last throw. So after our competition, Mom is our winner. Congratulations. What do you want your prize to be? I get to pick the movie we watch tonight. Well, let's just hope it's a good one. For The Ram Report, I'm John Shell. Back to you, Tyler. Wow, you guys have great arms. The Olympic scouting team should really think about placing you on the team for 2021. Next up, we have the Chico family doing a folding challenge. Hi guys, today members of the Chico family, Dulce Maria Chico, Juan Diego Chico, Diana Chico, and myself will be competing to see who can fold three shirts the fastest. The person who ultimately folds the shirts the fastest will then raise their hand and ultimately win the prize of picking out what we get to eat for dinner today. We each picked three shirts from our closet and mixed them together in a pile so we have a variety of different sizes and colors to choose from and fold, making the level of difficulty harder. The shirt can be folded however the person chooses, but the presentation must be nice and worthy of being on a store shelf. Three, two, one. The first pile is my little sister's, the second pile is my mom's, the third pile is mine, and the fourth pile is my brother's. Well, it's clear to see that my little sister won this competition, and although her presentation isn't the best, she still wins by default considering she has a band-aid on. And now she gets to pick the prize of what we're going to be eating for dinner tonight. What would you like? Spaghetti! I'm Isabella Chico reporting from the Ram Report. Back to you, Tyler. Wow, I'd like for you guys to come over and fold my laundry. We hope that you enjoyed our attempt at the 2020 Family Quarantine Olympics. And we'd like to again congratulate Cecilia Tabor, Mrs. Shell, and Dulce Maria Chico in winning their events. That's all for the competition. I'm Tyler Champer. Back to you in the studio, Brandon. Thank you for tuning in to another remote edition of the Ram Report Morning Show. Remember, we are learning together, we are in this together, and we will get through this together. And for the class of 2020, we know things are hard in these uncertain times, but your student leaders and teachers are doing everything they can so that your farewell from Town is as good as it can be. Hang in there, and every little thing is going to be all right. I'm your host, Brandon Sagbo. Stay safe and have a ram-tastic day.